Welcome back on uh, this Wednesday, and thank you so very much for staying with us. We had a short uh, break in continuity, however, we have resolved, and we are now back on line and on air as well, exclusively on Hot 7 TV. Thank you for making us your choice. My guest is already on the line, but I will introduce him uh, momentarily. Let me um, just indicate to my contributor on the WhatsApp platform our good um, corporate partner, sponsor, St. Lucia's number one telecommunications provider has uh, responded in quick time. Um, somebody had uh, suggested this morning in a WhatsApp convo, good morning, Shannon, I guess this is for prepaid users, the flow giveaway. When will flow have giveaways for postpaid users? We are not uh, too happy with the focus just on um, prepaid. I delivered your 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 message number five one eight. I delivered your your message and um, Michaela from Flo has responded. The marketing and corporate communications manager has uh, responded, and she says we listen to our customers. We listen to our customers, and I'm here to deliver on the ask. So we can give away one month free mobile service for postpaid customers. Wow. One month three mob free mobile service for postpaid customers. Thank you, Michaela. She says we listen to our customers and they, they delivered on the ask. I'll do that giveaway for your postpaid customers. Uh, number 518. <laughs> Is it 518? Yeah, number 518. I'll do that um, giveaway on Friday for the postpaid customers. Thank you so very much. And uh, we encourage you to make the switch. Make the switch, ditch and switch the day. Join St. Lucia's number one network flow. Let's continue now. My um, very special guest is already on. I won't keep him waiting any, any, any longer. Giovanni, good morning. You're on with us, right? Giovanni James. Good morning, Shannon. Nice. Thanks for coming back on. Thanks for the patience. Giovanni James, if you're just joining us and you weren't here yesterday, I'm sure you were. He is the former Citizen Security Advisor. I have it right, correct? Yes, you do. And he's also a consultant on um, security and safety matters as well, an attorney at law. Thanks for coming back on, Giovanni. I wanted to, to continue where we left off yesterday and you you opened a very interesting door the impact of the impacts report or the impacts investigation on our, our efforts here in terms of law enforcement how much is is impacts still having an impact on our police's policing operations to date and the manner in which the police are comfortable going out and execute their duties how much is is it still lingering in their minds and in their daily duties shannon it's sad to say that it continues as if it just happened yesterday police officers are still very much concerned about the way they go about executing duties for fear in many instances i can say that there may be some course of action taken against them. Mm -hmm. I mean, impact still has not been resolved. There are still officers who are awaiting decisions in relation to their matters. I can tell you, I have been contacted by some officers who simply want to know what their status is. Mm -hmm. um, officers who may have been involved in the whole impact situation. But it has a psychological impact, not just on the officers, but also on the citizens of St. Lucia and those persons who may want to commit crimes. That if the police use a heavy hand, if I can use that word, there is more likely to be a second um, mm. impact situation. It has caused a lot of um, confusion in the force. Morale is at its lowest. And I must say, it is something that has developed over time. I mean, when you have officers who are told that they cannot attend training, mm -hmm. which was offered by the USA, uh, because of this whole impact situation, whether or not these officers were directly involved for so many years, mm -hmm. it shows you that we are at a stage in St. Lucia where we are now ripping um, the fruits mm. of 
this whole impact situation mm -hmm. and of course mm -hmm. um, the allegations leveled against police officers yeah and, and and if you're new to 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 discourse over impacts um perhaps you, you were not of age we're referring to the the period in 2011 where there were reports of um alleged extrajudicial killings by members of uh, of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Giovanni, to your knowledge, why has there, ha hasn't there been a closure on this, on this matter? Shannon, I, I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, and I say I wish I knew the answer because um, we've gotten indications from the Director of Public Prosecutions mm -hmm. as it relates to, to this matter. Um, I think the last I heard DPP speak on this was to exonerate some officers mm. and indicate that um, charges were likely to be preferred against others. So really, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm passing the buck in terms of answering this question, mm -hmm. but perhaps we should get an update, if not from the Director of Public Prosecutions, but from the police or even the government of St. Lucia mm -hmm. as it relates to that. because. As long as it continues to hang over the head of the heads of police officers and, by extension, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, we are going to continue to have these problems. Mm -hmm. It is amazing, Shannon, that I wanted to draw some linkage between what is happening now and the impacts report. Um, the intelligence suggests that we've had this firearm issue or firearms coming into St. Lucia as far back as right after the impacts report leading up to now, mm. which suggests that over that period of time, because of the lull um, in terms of police operations, mm. the uncertainty coming out of impacts, mm. Mm. persons seize that opportunity to be able to bring in firearms. So now we have persons with arsenals in St. Lucia, and we say, what are we going to do about it? But what we are facing now, it has been happening for some time. It has been developing. And unfortunately, the police being constrained in terms of acting has resulted in those individuals um, developing gangs. Okay, And the gangs are now very much organized, Okay, um, bringing in weapons, bringing in drugs, and of course, benefiting from crime which is an area that I hope to touch on today, which is what can we do in terms of taking away the benefit from crime so mm -hmm. that persons are dissuaded, especially the young, mm -hmm. from going into crime. But impacts has had and will continue to have a major impact, despite the fact that the Americans are now assisting mm -hmm. in terms of operations, in terms of training. Yeah. You, you made the, the, the point earlier, Mr. James, that perhaps members within, and, and I shouldn't say members, but people within criminal circles are fully aware that um, because of impacts and um, the impact that it had, the, the police are somewhat limited, and if indeed the police use the, the high-handed and strong approach to come at them, the criminal elements, there is an opportunity for um, another round of, of impact, so to speak. Um, go, go a lot more deeper into that, and how do you see that really playing out on the streets now with what we're seeing um, with a lot of violent crimes? Well, Shannon, it, it stares us in the face every day. I mean, you see it on social media where persons engage in conflict with police officers, um, basically taking on the police, regardless of what uniform this officer wears. Mm. Um, at one time, by way of example, if the SSU were to be deployed, Shannon, to respond to any scene, criminals, even those, and I, I don't want to use the word criminals in, in every um, um, aspect, but persons, for example, even those smoking a joint, a mar marijuana, would dispose of it because the SSU is now out. But now you see persons taking on the police, fighting with the police 
insulting the police and there is nothing for that and it is only because in my view i think it is because the police have had their hands tied behind their backs in relation to being able to deal with individuals mm. and i think it is time for example shannon that police have the use of body cams mm -hmm. okay in terms of dealing with that thing because it, it has a dissuasive um aspect to it in that if you are caught blatantly disrespecting the police or not complying with orders then that is something that can be used as evidence and it also protects the police yeah because i get had we had body cams back then a lot of the issues that have arisen because of impacts would not be facing us right now mm -hmm. so there has been a degrading of the authority that the police once had okay persons are well aware and i think to some extent even those who can give instructions to the police are cognizant and cautious in terms of the approach that is taken for fear that we're going to have another impact situation yeah because i can tell you there are police officers who are ready to go out on the streets okay and to enforce the law however that comes at a cost in that you have members of the public who will say well this is not the type of policing we should expect we expect a service and not people roughing people up and i do agree with that but we have to face as i as i started off we have to face the fact that the police no longer command the respect that mm -hmm. they once had and in fact it has gotten to a situation where persons no longer have confidence it is sad to say that coming from a law enforcement background but it is evident that police um they no longer have the, the public no longer has confidence in the police and so you have a lot of vigilante justice taking place persons are no longer willing to go and report a matter to the police and i'm not saying that it is solely because of police in action or what has happened in relation to impacts but the public is now of the view that it makes no sense reporting a matter to the police how long is it going to take for the matter to be investigated is it going to be investigated how long will it take for it to go through the court system all of these are questions that members of the public the ordinary man on the street mm -hmm. is asking mm -hmm. and so we really need to revisit what is happening and start rebuilding this level of trust and confidence in law enforcement institutions in St. Lucia. Two more questions for me quickly, Mr. James, um, on impacts and then we'll move on to two other issues. How many officers from your knowledge are, are still um, impacted by impacts, so to speak, or still implicated by impacts? And based on your experience, what should be the natural cost to closure um, in this matter? Shannon, if memory serves me correct, and I don't want to be quoted as giving a specific mm -hmm. figure, I think we have about three officers um, who may still be impacted by, by that. And when I say three officers, I'm speaking of it in the sense of perhaps still the likelihood of facing charges. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that even those officers who were exonerated, they are still suffering from the um, the impact of this report. For example, I have received calls about um, the fact that they were not able to participate in promotion um, promotions because of impacts. And so you have some officers who have been very good officers serving for almost 20 years. But because of impacts, they've mm -hmm. been left out of the promotion process, and they now want to know what are my what are my um, chances of getting promoted? Do I have any avenue? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the fact that um, I have not my I have not been exonerated in the public? Mm. Okay. And and so some of those officers say, "Can I get a letter? Okay, that I can at least keep." because of the emotional impact, mm -hmm. the psychological impact it has had on them. What can be done, Shannon, in my view, is that if in fact there is sufficient evidence 
to take the remaining officers before the courts. Take them before the courts and let the judicial system deal with them. Let the courts deal with them. I don't think the Americans are seeking convictions. That is not what it is. They simply want to see that the, the process, process mm -hmm. okay, is followed through. And so now it is for the DPP's office in conjunction with those persons who have been tasked to investigate to come forward and say, well, this is where we are. And I think as public servants, as persons who are accountable to the public, they should account for what is going on. Lastly, from me on um, on the, the impacts investigation and on the, the impacts report in case you just joining us, Mr. Giovanni and James is on with us again this morning. We're continuing on the, the new course, the discourse, focusing on uh, national security matters, um, citizen safety matters as well, public safety. Um, Giovanni James is a former uh, citizen security advisor to the government of uh, St. Lucia. Um, what you just described for the officers who appear to have been exonerated um, after almost a decade and uh, the missed opportunities that they would have had since still that there is no clearance for them in the public domain and no exoneration, so to speak, in the public domain, plus um, the unofficial three who still uh, may be implicated here 10 years after um, still no closure and, and no clear path to justice. Do you expect or anticipate any, um, not a legal challenge, but any legal procedure to be taken against um, the state by those officers? Any, any likelihood of, of that? It is possible, Shannon. I mean, um, if I have been to to simply give some guidance in relation to whether there's any legal recourse, I can anticipate that some officers may actually be contemplating. If not, they may have actually um, started proceedings. But I'm not in a position to say definitively that yes, proceedings have started, but it is a possibility. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that update. Let's move. Let's move on to other matters related to 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 crime and national security here on the island. Um, the, the the discussion has been a very lively one, and um, people have said in in clear terms that um, crime is is a lot more attractive than the proposed social programs by governments. So you have a lot of more youngsters being. Um, attracted and, and gravitating towards criminal gangs and criminal activities as opposed to engagement in the social programs and other um, initiatives that are available to them. How can we start to um, take away some of the, the incentives from the gangs, um, crack down on their profits so that it, it it is not as prof it does not come across to be more profitable or beneficial than association with a, a social um, social incentive program. Shannon proceeds of crime legislation, money laundering legislation. That is key. And it goes way back. Um, it has been used around the world. Um, I would like viewers and perhaps you, Shannon, to perhaps um, look at the what is happening in Jamaica in terms of the use of proceeds of crime legislation, unexplained wealth orders being granted, um, civil recovery orders. Um, it is as simple as Shannon. Um, I, I'll give you an example. Someone is found with a large amount of cash and cannot give an explanation as to how they came about this cash. Um, there have been many instances I can tell you where in St. Lucia, millions have has been forfeited in terms of cash forfeitures and that money has been reinvested into crime fighting initiatives mm. and so if we want to dissuade persons from committing crimes we need to effectively use this legislation why is it that someone who doesn't seem to have a job is able to drive a luxury vehicle have a big house on the hill and there is nobody asking the question or investigating and saying why is this person in possession of this 
if we can take away those proceeds, if we can take away the assets from the individuals, then it is going to be dissuasive in nature because the young man coming up is going to say, well, what am I going to benefit from this? I put my life at risk every day. And the government can simply come and say, well, you've not been able to show how you were able to amass this wealth. We're going to take it away. It is going to dissuade persons mm -hmm. from getting involved in crime. It is going to make legitimate jobs more attractive. Two in things, Jamaica, they two, use unexplained wealth orders all the time. Two so things on the, on the proceeds of crime legislation. Um, quickly, Mr. James, do we have the willpower to... to we have the legislation, but do we have the willpower to enforce enforce the legislation? Because um, what you're talking about, the proceeds of crime, it, it's not just on the ground, it's not just with the unemployed, perhaps it's it's across all sectors of, of our society. So firstly, do we have the, the willpower as a nation to, to enforce such legislation? I, I think with the current um, legislation that we have, there is the willpower, Shannon, but I can tell you that when I worked with the regional security system, one of the things that we were instrumental in doing was drafting proceeds of um, um, basically model proceeds of crime legislation for the entire Caribbean. And one of the things that we would have suggested was the introduction of civil recovery orders, which, as I explained, unexplained wealth orders, where you use the civil standard. It is not even a criminal trial. You are going against the assets of the individual and it doesn't matter who this person is it can be somebody at the upper echelons of society who just cannot explain how he or she came by this wealth we can forfeit however unfortunately this legislation or this amendment has not been passed and so it is a missed opportunity um, for the government and people of St. Lucia in terms of making crime less attractive so that piece of legislation is drafted but just not passed that is correct and again it goes back to my 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 to it goes back to my earlier question i'm not pressing you too much mr james but perhaps it's not passed because we don't have the willpower um to enforce such, such legislation and because of perhaps the the implications that it will have across the board um for 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 it to be implemented not pressing you too much but perhaps that's the reason why it still remains um, just in draft. Shannon, it, I, I will qualify what I've said. I think there's willpower in the sense of the investigative arms who would be responsible for mm -hmm. doing the investigation and prosecuting. Absolutely. However, um, these things always raise political questions, if mm -hmm. I can say, where a gov most governments, unfortunately, and it, it's not a problem simply in St. Lucia, but I, I, I want to speak of other jurisdictions as well in saying that when this legislation or this amendment or model legislation was presented, one question that came up quite frequently is how do we justify simply just going and taking assets from individuals? What is the, 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 the implication going to be? And mm. of course, there's always a tie to, well, this is going to affect me in an election. Mm. And so governments, successive governments across the region have been reluctant to introduce this legislation, even when there is international pressure mm. to do so. But what I will say, Shannon, is that there will come a time where countries will have no, no option choice. but to pass mm -hmm. legislation as a result of the mutual evaluations that, that take place on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for that. And um, it's it's I guess a wait and see until until we get to to that point because not just with with that legislation which remains in draft, we've we've um, instituted so many laws here, um, but sadly they're not being enforced. On this this occasion, you see clearly, um, viewers, why um, perhaps this particular piece of legislation remains um, in a draft. Um, draft format. Speak to the examples that you have seen across the region and internationally as well, how the proceeds from crime which have been um, seized under such legislation can assist law enforcement um, in the efforts in, in protecting the wider society. 
Yeah, Shannon, I'll give you the example of Jamaica. The FID in Jamaica has been successful in seizing millions and millions worth of assets from persons involved in Ponzi schemes, persons involved in lottery scamming. Okay, because that lottery scamming, for example, in Jamaica is quite a big thing. Mm -hmm. And just to explain what lottery scamming is, I, I'm not talking about go playing lottery, mm -hmm. but persons being able to acquire telephone numbers mm -hmm. of individuals in the United States and other parts of the world and they scam these individuals into paying a fee because these individuals are told that they've won something. And that was causing quite a bit of violence in Jamaica, in certain parts of Jamaica, because the information, Shannon, was so critical that persons were willing to, to kill and die just to get that information because it, it's like a treasure trove. But what started happening is that the government realized that there were just too many individuals involved in this and persons were becoming rich of lottery scamming. And so what they decided to do was to use money laundering legislation, but more so proceeds of crime legislation. Because in many instances, they were not able to get sufficient evidence to prove those persons or to even charge those persons and prove them guilty um, in a criminal court. Mm -hmm. However, this legislation allows you to go deal with the matter as if it were a civil case and say, well, okay, what job have you done? What taxes have you paid? Okay, how did you acquire all of, the, all of these assets? And if you are not in a position to be able to explain then there is the rebuttable presumption that these assets came from crime. Mm. And it's as simple as that. And it has worked wonders in Jamaica. You have examples of, I, I can tell you, in St. Vincent, one of the first cases dealing with proceeds of crime, this guy frequented St. Lucia actually quite often. He had yachts. He had big houses, he had vehicles. And the funny thing is that every vehicle of his was 666. So P666. So he portrayed himself as the Don mm. in St. Vincent. And one of my colleagues who worked with me at the RSS, who, had, who often gave presentation presentations on, on this case, said that, he engages with the youth quite frequently and many of them would say to him i want to be like this guy but when that guy was arrested and charged and all his assets were, were seized they started to say you know what on second thought i don't want to be like this guy because he's done all of that and he has lost everything mm -hmm. for what and so that was the dissuasive nature in it and these are just two examples you have it taking place in the cayman islands um, in the British Overseas Territories, in Dominica. There is proceeds of crime legislation. But what I want to say, Shannon, is that perhaps what we need to see happening in St. Lucia is that there is more publicity mm. in terms of the successes of our law enforcement authorities. Because I can say to you that in relation to cash forfeiture in the OECS and even Barbados, St. Lucia is the leader interesting we have an excellent team of investigators who've been able to forfeit millions okay and those funds have gone towards the purchase of vehicles mm -hmm. because the intention is to use those proceeds and put it back into law enforcement, into law enforcement mm -hmm. and other um, crime fighting initiatives i think you're absolutely correct in saying there's need for for greater publicity of um of those gains because you pointed to the example in um, jamaica where when the the youngsters got wind of well in st vincent and the grenadines I, I think it was got wind of um how the proceeds were seized from that guy who used the 666 they no longer wanted to to be like him so if the um stories of those successes locally um, where you see in St. Lucia perhaps has the highest levels of forfeiture in the Eastern Caribbean and um, Barbados as well. 
um, at all, perhaps it can have some impact in guiding our youngsters away from wanting to be associated with with um, criminal gangs. Yes. But Shannon, I want to I want to add something to that because there must be a balance. If we are going to take away the incentives for persons to commit crime, we must provide alternatives. Mm -hmm. You cannot take away, it's like you, you say you take my bread, uh, so what do I eat? And so it requires it requires us, and I hope I'm not um, deviating from where you want to go. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm very much interested in, in finding out what you think would be an appropriate alternative. Um, yes, it requires state agencies to not come up with social programs that are short-lived in nature, but would give individuals an opportunity to become business owners entrepreneurs in their own right mm. and i want to give the example of st kitts and nevis one of the jurisdictions that i i had the fortune of working in and i can tell you that crime at one time st kitts and nevis was considered to have the highest homicide rate per capita in the world it was that high for for its population and what happened is that the government saw the need to invest resources and that is what we need to see happening in St. Lucia if we want to make any meaningful um, strides in terms of tackling crime. Mm -hmm. So the government hired experts to guide its decision-making process okay, um, in terms of how to deliver gun crime in St. Kitts. They came about with social programs and I can tell you if you are to look at the statistics now, as it relates to homicides in St. Kitts, it is a lot lower, far lower than what it was before, because they decided to create programs to give people employment. Mm -hmm. And the way it was done, it, it may not seem to be a positive move for many, but the way it was done is that the gang leaders were targeted, the heads of the gangs were targeted, and then they were, said, they were told, listen, we need this to stop and we are willing to provide alternatives we will help you set up legitimate businesses where your guys can be involved in those businesses they can work so things like mm. carpentry construction a car wash there are so many different things that one can do entrepreneurship programs that we can engage our youth in that will see that that will see benefits now some may say that the young men now don't want to work and that may be true but we are not talking about simply coming up with social programs and not looking looking at the other aspects it has to be multifaceted and and, and the thing is you're given you're given an option as well so i have i have the social program and we're just using the example of of view fort here I have a social program, but in addition to the social program, I'm going into into the mango, I'm going into this hotspot in Viewfort, um, engaging the leaders and saying, hey, I will give you the support to open legitimate and honest business. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where you're going. That That is pretty much what happened in St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was able to well the violence that was happening in St. Kitts. Yeah. The government invested in the people because, Shannon, yesterday I said that we need to go and look at the root causes of, of what is um, pushing crime in St. Lucia. The unfortunate thing, and I am not political, I'm not partisan, that is not my concern, but I've had the opportunity to speak to various persons and they when when you hear persons telling you that they don't know where they're going to get the next meal when you have a father who has children and the mother is saying well where are we getting food the children are hungry this man not being able to work is going to turn to crime and it is simply a survival instinct mm -hmm. and the unfortunate thing about crime shannon is that he may start out as a petty thief mm -hmm. or yeah. he may rob yeah. and it will gra he graduates to something bigger and so unless we deal with programs where we don't just give people handouts 
which they, 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 they only have use of it for a day or two. We give them a, a cylinder of gas. We pay their electricity for one month. That is not going to resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the it only, is not. Yeah, agreed. And and one of the only things which which um, opposers of the former prime minister in, in St. Kitts used at the time against um, his strategy um, was the, the fact that when you go in these communities and do the engagement and provide the, the alternative opportunities for legitimate business, um, there should be uh, genuine effort to retrieve the, retrieve the, the, the firearms as well and the, the illegal de devices. Indeed, indeed, because what it does, Shannon, it creates a buffer to allow, if the guys are not busy shooting each other, it gives the police the opportunity to focus their attention in terms of recoveries. Mm. Okay, as opposed to constantly investigating. Mm. And that is what is happening in St. Lucia. The police are always trying to catch up. Because every other day, if you have, for example, you have a major crime unit that is responsible in St. Lucia for investigating all murders in St. Lucia. Okay? And they are pretty much burnt out. When you have a group of maybe six or seven um, individuals investigating all of those serious crimes and they investigate murders, they investigate other serious crimes. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? So there must be a clear plan. There must there must be a clear policy. Okay, the police either need to say, well, okay, we are going to focus on preventative policing, and you throw your resources behind that, or the crimes happen and they investigate. Mm. Now, from experience, one can see that a lot of the crimes are not being solved because you don't have witnesses but we need to come up with various social programs we need to empower our youth we need to provide alternatives to them and i think on the first occasion when when i was on your show i spoke about um things like information technology okay programming i spoke about you know my son telling me he wants to start a YouTube channel because this mm -hmm. is where the money is. That is where we need to be going. And we need to get persons who can guide the decision-making process, okay? Because we are not operating back in the 80s where policing has to, where policing is the same, okay? Things have changed, okay? We have a population right now where people are no longer turned off by violent scenes so we need to provide the right alternatives and sometimes the best way to do that shannon is to engage those who are affected and that is why i think there is need for an in-depth study okay of what is causing what are the root causes of crime in st lucia not let's sit at you know I think we'd have lost connection with um, Giovanni. We will have to re-establish connection with him. Still with us here, see Lucia. Very interesting um, discussion. Attorney at law, Giovanni James. He is also a consultant on uh, security matters as well and a former uh, national advisor on citizen security and citizen safety here to the government of the St. Lucia. We will re-establish connection with him in um, just a bit. Still with us, it's a very interesting discussion. We're talking all issues of uh, um, national security. Mr. James, you're back with us. Giovanni, you're back with us. Good morning. My producers are telling me that he well, is uh, on. Yes, I am. Yes. Sorry thank, about that. Thank you. Connected. Thanks for coming back on. Giovanni, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I don't know if you would have concluded your point or you want to continue. I would have another follow-up question for you. Um, I, I don't know what you last heard, so perhaps we can move on to so, another so, question. So just, just one more from me on the proposed um, procedure of crime legislation. Make the case for me for it to be enforced as a civil matter as opposed to a criminal matter. What are the benefits there? The benefits of it being civil in nature is the 
burden of proof is on the state, the standard is less. Whereas in a criminal matter, you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt, Shannon. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a very high standard. With it being a civil case, the burden is less. You are not going against the individual. You are going against the assets. Mm. And it is for the individual to prove to the police. So the easiest way to explain it to your viewing public and your listening public is mm -hmm. to speak about cash and the same concept can apply to property in one instance i remember 265,000 euros being found in the possession of an individual you don't know the where it came from mm -hmm. but the mere fact of its packaging how it was packaged okay it was on a boat the police were able to say, well, the circumstances are such that this money could only have come from crime. And it was linked to the drug trade, despite the fact that no drugs were found. Mm. Because the individual in question was not able to explain how he came by it. And this money was forfeited. And it was as easy as that. Mm. And you've had many instances in St. Lucia where you have foreign currency and you even have local currency. When an, a, a financial investigation is conducted, it is a very detailed investigation looking at the individual, their employment background, their financial status, the, their banking status, their tax status, and saying, well, this person has never paid taxes. His bank account does not reflect regular monies going in and out of his account. We look at his employment background. Okay, he doesn't seem to make much, if at all, anything. And so on that basis, we are saying that this money came from crime or was intended for use in crime. In relation to property, as has been the case in Jamaica, they they go with the civil standard and say when we carry out this financial investigation this person cannot legitimize the assets that he or she has and so the logical or uh, conclusion is that it came from crime now a lot of people may not be will not be in favor of it shannon mm -hmm. i can tell you it has met a lot of resistance but the aim of it is that it seeks to identify those persons who acquires property okay through illegal means and persons who are able to amass wealth through legitimate means will have the necessary paper trail to do so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i give an example of should an individual be allowed to walk into a car dealership with $200,000 cash and simply pay and say, I want this vehicle and I want it modified to my specifications, what have you. Should that raise questions? Shouldn't there be some sort of reporting to the financial intelligence unit that, hey, we just had an individual come in with $200,000 cash. Should we be concerned? Because it has happened. Mm -hmm. Stay with us, stay with us, Giovanni. We must just take a short break, thirty seconds or so. I'll come back and I'll ask you shortly. Because on the criminal end of things, if you proceed in with it on a criminal matter, you need um, real evidence to prove that um, the proceeds were, were gained through um, illegal means. Indeed. Stay with me. We'll continue the discussion shortly. Morning a loss? Heart 7 TV wants to help you celebrate the beautiful memory of your loved one with In Loving Memory, celebrating lives. Whether it's a birthday, a wedding anniversary, or some memorable occasion, or the anniversary of the passing of the Delhi departed, Heart 7 TV will create a moving video tribute of that special person, showing how much he or she meant to you. 
treasured memories, unforgettable moments. Share them with the world and repeat the airing as often as you'd like. Help keep your loved one's memory alive forever in the minds and hearts of all who care. In loving memory, celebrating lives. Contact us at telephone number 452-6040 or email us at inlovingmemory at caribbeanhottv.com. Get your clothes sparkling clean with whiter whites and brighter colors. Use Joby Antibacterial Washing Powder. Ultra concentrated formula gives more washes with brightening factors added to keep your clothes looking new. And with the added organic fabric softener, your clothes will be soft and fluffy. Joby Antibacterial Washing Powder is also effective in stain removal. For cleaner, brighter, softer clothes with the sweet scent of early spring morning, use Joby Antibacterial Washing Washing powder. My family, my love, my Joby. Available at supermarkets island wide. For orders, call 455 3076. Ooh la la! See what's new at Courts. We've got great deals on living and dining room sets, appliances, electronics, and smart devices, and more. Shop today with no cash using Quartz Ready Finance, 3 to 48 month payment plans available. Shop in store or online at shopquartz.com. Come see what's new and take advantage of these great deals only at Quartz. Bringing value home. Conditions apply. Welcome back and thanks to staying with us. We're continuing our discourse this morning on matters of citizen safety, national security as well, and on um, crime in general. In just a bit, you will hear from former government minister, Dr. Jimmy Fletcher, on uh, the current uh, crime situation. But uh, with us now, a former citizen security advisor to the government of St. Lucia, Mr. Giovanni James, attorney at law. He's also a former advisor at the Regional Security Service, RSS. Mr. James, thanks for staying with us. You were touting the benefits of going after the proceeds of crime as a civil matter. On If it were to be a criminal matter, you would need to prove using solid evidence that the, the, the crime, the proceeds um, were generated through association with criminal activity. Yes, you would, Shannon. And one of the things that you would need as well is witnesses. You would mm -hmm. need to actually prove that, in fact, the monies or the assets came from a crime. And in many instances, um, it is difficult and sometimes almost impossible to prove the exact crime that something we have come out mm -hmm. of. And, and so that mechanism has been used successfully around the world in in the recovery of assets mm -hmm. in the um prevention of crime because money laundering legislation was developed proceeds of crime legislation was developed as an alternative um to being able to take down organized crime groups or organized crime because it was uh, this these crimes are so or, or these organizations are so sophisticated in their operations mm. okay you talk about the mafia for example um they they were able to get some of those individuals not by getting them involved and not by their involvement in murders and racketeering and that sort of thing but proceeds of crime legislation yeah yeah Yep, 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 yep. Early on, you pointed that um, the approach to tackle it as a civil matter was getting um, pushed back, a lot of pushback, you said. Who, who, why would people push back on, on such an approach, and who are the pockets of societies who you'd find um, pushback coming from most? 
the pushback is coming from our our legislators, mm. the people in government. Ouch. Those persons who would be expected to enact this legislation. And as I said, the fear was, how do we justify passing legislation that is going to take assets, take property away from individuals? It, it, it has been a hard pill to swallow. But as I said, we will get to the stage where we will have no option because St. Lucia has signed on to various conventions um, where we must pass certain legislation yeah. at some point. And with the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force doing evaluations on, on the Caribbean as it relates to the money laundering and proceeds of crime regime, that also affects us. Mm -hmm. um, I would have heard Dr. Hiller recently talking about one of the requirements is to enact legislation and have mechanisms in place to deal with the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. All of that is tied in, okay, to money laundering, the proceeds of crime regime. So we have no choice but to enact the legislation at some point. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that we have had an opportunity to get ahead of the game, and we've not taken this opportunity. No, the legislation legislators don't have um, the willpower. I'll ask you one more on that, and then some questions from from our um, viewers as well. What what um, is available now in the Caribbean region? You can start in the OECS and then take it across to CARICOM for us to do our monitoring and surveillance and an interagency collaboration in uh, monitoring proceeds of, of crime and even enforcing legislation in, in that regard. Shannon, you have in every OECS state in the entire Caribbean, you have departments that are responsible for the investigation of proceeds of crime matters. Mm -hmm. There's actually an informal network um, which was created during my stint at the RSS. It's called Arin Carib, which is an informal network of all stakeholders, not just from an investigative angle, but also from a prosecutorial angle um, that is part of this network. And this Caribbean network is also linked to every other asset recovery informal network in the world. So I can tell you just, um, I think it was last week, the Iron Carib concluded its annual AGM. Mm. So you have persons as far, you have persons from Bermuda all the way down to Guyana and Trinidad being part of this network. And so the benefit of this network and the headquarters, I can tell you, is at the RSS. You have persons who have specific skill set, a specific skill set who basically mentor investigators and prosecutors and conduct training throughout the Caribbean. And I can tell you, we have a very good network, Shannon. We have an extremely good network to the point where I've had the opportunity of going all the way to Africa mm -hmm. uh, to, to deliver a talk to deliver training nice. to stakeholders over there. I see Lucian Giovanni James um, traveling to Africa to deliver training on um, issues of, of um, security, issues of um, financial investigation and, and, and the likes. Two questions now, Giovanni, from our, our audience, and then we'll ask you a few more. I know you have a very busy schedule ahead, and I thank you so much for yeah. staying on. Um, somebody is asking, how can the government facilitate these criminals to engage in a legitimate business? Who are the suspects facilitating unlawful activities, including the importation of illegal firearms, etc.? It, uh, it appears that we can talk but refuse to take action. I don't know if you want to quickly come in on the first part of this. How can government facilitate these criminals to engage in legi legitimate businesses? Or have you already covered that? Shannon, it has to be done at a community level. Mm -hmm. For example, you have the Sufre Foundation, right? 
you may have crime taking part in certain parts of Sufre. We're not saying that you go and then you just hand a bag of money to a gang leader and say, hey, use this for the guys and set up a business. We are saying through engagement, through positive engagement, you use established institutions, community-based institutions to set up um, employment and entrepreneurship opportunities. For example, you have, I, I remember, I'm from Miku South, by way of example, Shannon, mm -hmm. and I remember growing up, the Catholic Church had a carpentry and joinery workshop um, that they run. Most of the carpenters or joiners in that community, they develop their skills from that center. Mm. They, these individuals did not have to pay to, to learn that skill, but they have become amongst the best in the South in relation to, 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 to carpentry and joinery. And so we need to be looking at those, th those initiatives. We should not wait for others to come in and do it. I saw a news, a news item on the mushroom farm, by way of example. Mm -hmm. We can think of opportunities using community um, agencies to do it. We have institutions like RISE. We have the different um, clubs in the different communities. Let us utilize them. Let us utilize them. We're not saying give money to, to the to the criminals. We're saying provide them with opportunities so that they are going to be engaged positively as opposed to engaging in crime. Yeah. Thanks a lot, um, Giovanni. A uh, contribution from our WhatsApp platform. Good morning, Shannon. Excellent contribution by your guests. Where does Mr. James work? Does he provide any service? Or advice to the government of St. Lucia. Shannon, I was hoping to avoid this question. <laughs> but I, I was really hoping to avoid this question. I am in private practice right now. Um, my previous role was that of the citizen security advisor. I was recruited pretty much by from the RSS. Mm -hmm. I was at the RSS. I'm serving as advisor when I was recruited by the former head of the performance management delivery unit, mm -hmm. along with former commissioner, Mr. Morsheri. Um, it was felt that with my skill set, knowledge, background, I would have been able to contribute towards the development of initiatives and strategies and policies to assist in crime fighting in St. Lucia. However, um, as has happened in many cases, and I, I don't think it is unique to just this government, it happens all the time. Uh, if, when the government changed, my contract was terminated. I have offered my services um, indirectly. I continue to offer my services indirectly. Um, and when I say offer, I'm not saying that I'm actually doing anything, but offering to make my time available, mm. make my knowledge and experience available. I have engaged with um, nonprofit organizations, like I seek to work with RISE, because genuinely, Shannon, I am not interested in the politics. Mm -hmm. I am affected by crime in St. Lucia. I think we have a number of persons in St. Lucia who can lend their experience and expertise, and they have a responsibility. And I'm calling on them, actually, to step forward, as I have decided to. I can tell you I'm not someone who likes to be in the spotlight, Shannon. Mm -hmm. But having realized that I was not getting anywhere in terms of being able to offer my services. I, I've, I took the bold decision to come on your program mm -hmm. and to share with the rest of St. Lucia, okay, to, to learn from the rest of St. Lucia in terms of how we can better deal with the crime situation in St. Lucia. Yeah. Th thanks for that. I'm not, I'm not going to muddy the waters anymore, but um, writer, 
To be frank, Mr. James, who is a well-trained and qualified, has provided extensive service across the Caribbean in training law, law enforcement personnel as well, a former advisor um, with the Regional Security System, RSS. He was recently with the government of St. Lucia. To be frank, he's not going to say it in those words, but I will say it. His contract was uh, terminated. He has provided um, the option of him providing his service to the government of St. Lucia. However, um, the powers that be at the moment don't seem interested in his engagement. So he's doing public service now by engaging via this platform and others to share his uh, thoughts, to share his experience on how we can address um, the current situation here. Somebody's saying, good job, very informative, Mr. James. Another contribution, and then we continue and wind down this segment. Jimmy Fletcher, Dr. Jimmy Fletcher, former government minister, is on next. He'll be talking about crime. Richie Sutherland is saying, very interesting, interesting discussion this morning. First sensible and intelligent discourse on crime prevention since the increase in the spate of homicides. Um, the office of the Prime Minister would not agree with you, Richie. Um, all business, sh business should be subject to reporting, the, to reporting to the FIU, the Financial Investigations Unit, completion of uh, DSF. Um, he goes on, if you, if you hit the criminal where he feels it most, that is in his pockets and provide, like Mr. James has alluded to, then we will begin to see a reduction in major crime because it is no longer possible to profit from crime. We have a FIU, a financial investigation unit here, and we have been working hard on solving financial crime. Great show. Um, thanks for that contribution. Again, we uh, big up the staff and the officers at the FIU. And from all accounts, you continue to register the most successes in seizures across the OECS and uh, Barbados included. So although your stories are not told as frequently and as loudly as they should, we note your successes. So the team at FIU, good morning. Um, continue your excellent service on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. Mr. James, you still with us? Yes, I am. I'll, I'll hold you for five more minutes if, if your schedule permits me, please. Um, earlier on, we were discussing the, the value of perhaps our, our police officers utilizing uh, the body cams um, on operations. And we, we could know the benefit that it would have had during um, the 2011 period where we now have um, the impacts reporting and impacts investigation still looming over a number of our heads. Um, other devices which can be used, other um, policing infrastructure, the likes of CCTV um, technologies, again on the front burner of discussion. But some people fear that it will infringe on people's personal privacy. Um, from your experience, talk about how we can utilize that, that um, technology, but still guaranteeing our citizenry that um, their rights will not be infringed upon. Shannon, one of the greatest assets used in the United Kingdom is that of closed circuit te television, CCTV. You have cameras everywhere. I don't think there's any invasion of privacy because these cameras are not aimed inside of people's homes, but it covers uh, the outside. And one of the initiatives that I can say, I hope is still ongoing, is that there is a project which started under the former administration, that is the KLED project, where what the government was seeking to do is to replace all street lighting with LED lighting. Mm -hmm. And out of that, they would be getting tremendous savings because the government has to pay for street lighting. Uh, I think so. 20 million, savings, 20 million dollars annually just on street lights. Yes. The savings that would be generated from the LED lighting um, was earmarked to be used for cameras um, throughout St. Lucia. And I can tell you, Shannon, I have seen the demonstration of these cameras and I am impressed. And I will give you one example. The way these cameras are set up is that it is linked to artificial intelligence. 
um, software that has tremendous capabilities. If a crime were to be committed in the city of Castries by way of example, and the individual was described as having a red shirt, mm. black pants, white shoes, mm -hmm. you could actually give a command to the software, to the program, asking for it to search for everybody with the description that I've just given. Mm -hmm. And every single camera would commence searching. So say, for example, this individual were to be walking along Jeremy Street. Yeah. And the crime was committed on the boulevard. But when this person got to the boulevard, this person would have put on a mask or a bandana to cover the face. With the use of this, these cameras, it would pick up every single individual matching this description. And so it provided it, it can provide the opportunity for the police to be able to identify this individual before he would have put on this mask. You have what is called ANPR cameras, and the intention of that was to link it um, to the Department of Transport, where license plates would be scanned mm. by those cameras. And if there is any anomaly, say, for example, the license plate does not match the make model description of this vehicle, mm. it would flag it. And so the intention was, um, we, and, and what I want to say is that there was extensive discussion and collaboration with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in terms of the specifications on what they would have wanted. Um, you have hunter cameras, you have cameras with the capacity to, to zoom to quite a distance. And so for me, that would have assisted significantly. I also wanted the government to publicize or to come up with duty-free concessions for business owners, for mm -hmm. private home owners on security systems, on camera systems, with the one condition that there must be a camera covering the outside or the street area. Mm -hmm. Shannon, can you imagine the capabilities the police would have? Because these cameras would be running 24-7. The electricity used to run those cameras would not be a cost to the government. It's a household. That would be incurred by the business owners and, 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 and civilians. Mm -hmm. Just on the condition that if any crime is committed and your camera were to pick it up, that the police would have access to the footage that they can use. Mm -hmm. And so I think this would be a brilliant idea. And that the cameras are just one of the initiatives. I can tell you that another initiative that we were looking at, and I'm hoping that it can be implemented, is the use of GPS tracking on all vessels registered in St. Lucia. There was discussion, and what I want to say, Shannon, before I even continue, is that I believe that engagement is key. If the government intends on doing anything that is going to affect a certain sector, that sector should be involved in the discussion and the decision-making process. So I can tell you that we ha would have had discussions with the Fisher folk, for example, um, as it relates to the installation of GPS tracking on all fishing vessels. There's a dual purpose to that. It would allow for tracking. It would allow for tracking of vessels. It would allow for um, security purposes in terms of safety and security. Absolutely. We've heard so many times families complaining about relatives being lost at sea. With this sort of GPS tracking, it is satellite tracking. So it reduces the instances of someone being lost at sea and not being able to be found. Because you could use this device to send an SOS. Um, it can be used for fisheries purposes. And the options are so many, Shannon. Mm -hmm. However, devices were purchased and it's not been installed.
because what is required is a simple amendment to the legislation to make this device part of the safety equipment. Mm -hmm. That is all that is required. And, and the proposal was that the state would have funded that, that investment. I'm very much interested because it's a sector that, yeah. uh, it's a sector yeah. that, that I am part of um, now. Consultation would be key, as you, you spoke of, but I can see the benefit, especially for the safety of fishers um, who venture out having, having such a device in, in, the, in the event that um, you go adrift or have some, some engine problems. And on the other hand, it benefits the state because we identify that we have very porous borders and a lot of the illegal firearms are not coming through the airports, but are rather coming through um, our porous um, borders. Many of, of, of them extend around, around the island. So I see the benefit there. Um, interesting interesting um, proposal. Um, consultation would be key. So hopefully... Um, we can get an update sooner rather than later on that. One more question, then I'll let you go, Giovanni. Um, recently, the, act, the Deputy Prime Minister, um, also acting right now, Honorable Ernest Hiller, Dr. Ernest Hiller, touted that although we are not manufacturers of guns, we still um, see heavy numbers here. Um, we know where the firearms are coming from. Majority of them are coming from and off the Venezuelan coast. Um, they come from the United States and elsewhere as well. The minister is speaking about lobbying the gun manufacturers and holding them accountable. How far off is that? Shannon, I, I, I want to, to correct something. The intelligence shows that the guns, most of the guns coming into St. Lucia are coming in through our legitimate ports. Our legitimate ports? Yes, via barrels, in appliances it's coming in through our legitimate ports out of america legitimate there, ports there out many, of america yes there are not many firearms there are firearms coming in via venezuela but the the cost of those firearms coming out of the states is next to nothing compared to a venezuelan vessel coming mm. and dropping off guns that happened that used to happen maybe um 10 years ago okay but now most of the firearms are coming in uh, for example most of the you would see most of the seizures taking place at our ports nine firearms 12 firearms these are just some of the firearms coming in but the major issue is that it is coming via our legitimate ports out of the united states of america so dr hiller is correct in saying um, and I guess he was informed by the intelligence that we are not gun manufacturers. And so there must be something done by those countries that manufacture weapons to assist our region. In fact, there was a recent meeting amongst um, national security um, ministers and stakeholders uh, recently where they, had, they decided that, hey, the Americas and those countries providing firearms, they need to provide some level of assistance to our region. I mean, the, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent has, has been talking about this for some time. And in my research recently, I came across the fact that there's an intention to set up a regional gun violence unit, mm. uh, which would have the responsibility, I guess, um, across the region for assisting in terms of capacity building as it relates to the investigation and interception of firearms. Mm -hmm. But Shannon, you see, for me, yes, I agree with Dr. Hiller that we need to get the assistance from the Americas as well, but there's also a lot that we can do in St. Lucia. In our own domain. Mm -hmm. I would hope to see us having a ballistics database. So when firearms are recovered, those firearms can be the, 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 the casings or the, the rounds can be compared um, with records to see whether this firearm, which is recently recovered, was used in a previous crime or murder or that sort of thing. We need to be building capacity locally because there is nothing compelling the Americas mm. to do anything other than to collaborate with our law enforcement agencies. And I can say to you that the collaboration is taking place. Yeah. This guy who was arrested in America, by way of example, 
in relation to firearms. Mm -hmm. It was because of a collaborative effort between local law enforcement agencies and the Americas. Thanks for that, Giovanni. Um, let, let's end off here for today, and then we'll, we'll reconvene at another time when, when your schedule permits. Yes. If there's one thing I can say, Shannon, by ending, yes. it is to say that I'm hoping that um, with what is going on, that the government will take the opportunity not just to come up with um, initiatives to fighting crime, but to also manage the expectations of our mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. This issue is not going to be resolved in one day or a month or a year. It is going to take some time. And it is important that persons understand that it will take some time. There are supposed to be short, medium, and long-term strategies. But it is only when we get to the long-term strategies that we can begin to see a meaningful um, reduction in crime, and in particular, violent crimes. Yeah. Giovanni, I want to thank you for coming on and thank you for your continued public service to, to us here in St. Lucia. Um, I respect your, your experience and, and, and your wisdom as well, but former commissioner in Trinidad and Tobago, um, Gary Griffith, and I, I too agree with him. He says with one year, he can get this situation under control here in St. Lucia. You think it will take a lot longer, um, but definitely there are things that we can get going right now. Thanks so much for sharing with us, Giovanni. And um, we'll talk again very soon. Thank you very much, Shannon. I'm wishing you a blessed day. You as well. Attorney at law, um, Giovanni James. He's also the former citizen security um, advisor to the government, obviously, in Lucia. He was also an advisor to the Regional Security Service, the RSS. Well trained and qualified gentleman who has uh, provided um, extensive training to law enforcement um, personnel across. Um, the Caribbean and even um, internationally as well. Did some work on the African continent as well. Stay with us next. I will bring all.